Hey there, my name is Jeremy Durat, but in the professional realm, I go by JD Hunter. I live in a small community in central Alberta, and for work, I'm a freelance DJ, MC, and public speaker on the topics of mental health, addiction, and community. Today, I have one goal in mind, and you should as well, talking. It's Let's Talk Day. And everyone has a chance to go deeper into a topic that's been heavily stigmatized for decades. In all honesty, it's only been over the last five or 10 years that the conversations around mental health have really started to become common in our culture. We still have a lot of work to do as a country and as the world, and that's a big part of why today matters. Hey, I live in a small community in central Alberta, but I've lived in multiple places around the province. I've had the chance to meet people from all over, and something that always sticks out to me is the fact that we all have way more in common than there are differences. As we consider mental health as a whole, there's a lot that can be said. I personally have lived with mental illness since I was young, and I want to take a few minutes to share some of my story with you. My heart for you is that in hearing this, you'll understand that you're not alone. And there is so much hope. I want to start at the beginning. I was born and raised in the tomato capital of Canada, a town called Leamington, which had a Heinz factory and the information center at the center of town was a giant tomato. I'm the third of four siblings, and I've been asked what my life was like before my mental illness started. The truth is, some of my earliest memories were difficult. I would go to my cousin's house for a sleepover and I'd have an emotional breakdown every time. It turns out that the panic attacks I had were a result of separation anxiety. This is big for me to know, as a few years ago, there was so much about myself I had no idea about. I was 11 years old, the first time I decided that the pain was too much and I was ready to take my life. It's a pretty young age. But to properly understand how I got to that place, I have to go back a bit. When I think of my earliest memories, I can recall good times well, with friends and family, <laughs> with my family. I'm sure most kids can remember good memories, even if there are also tough ones. The problem is, some of those hard moments were very difficult, as abuse impacted the way I saw the world as a child. And interestingly enough, I have something great written here, and as soon as I say it a little bit differently, my mind says, mm, you should start over. But you know what? I'm just going to let it rip, and we're just going to be real. Real? Real? <laughs> we're going to be real here today. I was nine years old when I first came across an explicit website. Without getting into too many details, there is content out there that some people use in private times at home. You may or may not now know what I'm referring to, but what's important is the fact that I was only nine when this came into my life and it heavily impacted me. It also surrounded three separate times that I experienced sexual abuse. Because of all of this trauma, I isolated and withdrew much of my childhood and teen years. I had friends, I participated in a ton of activities, but very often, I was either thinking about that online material or what I could do with it. It was a compulsive, obsessive problem in my life that very quickly became an addiction. It's really tough to talk about all this, but the reality is, if my childhood wouldn't have included any of those things, I would be a completely different person today. I probably wouldn't be talking to you. And to be honest, I have no idea where I would be or who I would have become. I don't like the traumatic experiences, but what I appreciate is that I was given the opportunity in my life to take those experiences and turn them around for good to encourage others. I definitely have more to say about some of my other tough moments, but I really want to get the idea across that you are not alone. There is hope. You're probably going to hear me say that a few times, but I want you to know, no matter what your life may look like, there is hope. Okay, back to my story. I grew up in Ontario, as I mentioned, but then due to some tough situations, my family had to move across the country to Alberta. Not only was it difficult to move in the middle of my grade 10 semester, it was hard, as I was homeschooling at the time and switched into a public school. 
My little sister had dyslexia growing up. She had a really difficult time reading. Because of that, my parents decided she needed a little extra help and support. And since we were close in age, they decided to move us both into home education. This isn't as strange in the world we live in, as I know many folks experienced doing school from home over the pandemic, but it certainly was an interesting way to be raised. It took a lot of work and effort, but not only did I make it through that year, I was able to graduate from high school in grade 12. Woo! I didn't mean there weren't my share of hard parts though through all that. I was bullied quite a lot. Because of the shame I had about what I was doing in isolation, it caused me to have very little self-confidence, and the bullies in my school saw that and pressed pretty heavily on it. I was maybe 11. No, I was. I was 11, the first time I experienced suicidal ideation. But that wasn't the last time. I experienced a lot of dark, heavy moments in my teen years, and if it wasn't for my close friends, my youth group at church, and my family, I don't know if I would have been able to get through it, which brings me right back to the idea of mental illness. Sometimes problems we have are just mental health problems, but there are times it's a hereditary condition and it can come down to chemical imbalances in our brain. I had no idea what growing up with mental health was other than the stigmatizing ways people would talk about it. There was little understanding of just how common it is. I would hear words like anxiety and depression thrown around, but it was usually when people made fun of it. It wasn't until a natural disaster took place that I finally started understanding what exactly it was. My dream and goal in life since I was six was to work in radio. I loved everything about it. Sharing stories, playing music, interviewing members of the community, getting out and about, being recognized. It was all a ton of fun. It was awesome. That was until I had to broadcast from the middle of what I believe has been deemed the largest natural disaster in Canadian history. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's factually accurate. Back in May of 2016, Fort McMurray, Alberta experienced the Horse River wildfire, which saw the whole community evacuated. Tens of thousands of people, around 90,000, all had to leave the city with one way in and one way out. At that time, I was doing my radio show as I did every other day. But on that day, I had to share news, help everyone understand what was happening and where, and to come to terms with the reality that I might not make out of there alive. That horrible moment in my life triggered an almost seven year journey, which I now find myself in. I found myself at the brink of suicide several times over the past few years. It really didn't change until I started realizing that my personality wasn't the same as the mental illness I lived with. I was officially diagnosed this last year, 2022, with generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder with a seasonal component, which is why winter is a lot tougher for me than summer, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, hyperactivity disorder. Most people just say ADHD, which you may or may not know is the squirrel one. Oh, also obsessive compulsive tendencies, and I also battle addiction. Having diagnoses from my psychiatrist was an incredible moment for me and a huge part of my story as I finally understood why I was the way I was. And that's a huge part of the story. I didn't survive the wildfire and then move on and be good. It's a journey. Every year I learn something new about myself and I'm able then to apply it to my current circumstances. So if you feel like there are things about yourself that don't make sense or you don't understand, that's okay. I've been there too. And there's also hope for you. In fact, I was told by one of my instructors in college that the lisp I had was not enough for anyone to, in their right mind, ever hire me to be on the air in the radio industry. It's a part of me that I grew up with, and according to him, that was enough for me to no longer be hireable for the on-air presentation aspect as an announcer. Not only did he end up being wrong in the end, but I persevered above and beyond anything he expected from me based on that shortcoming. I knew what I was meant to do, and I did everything I could to go after that dream. 
There may be people in your life that don't see it. And I don't know what it is for you, but there may be moments that you feel something is right despite what others may say. So never give up on your dreams. If you truly believe something's right for you and it doesn't harm you or cause you damage, then go for it. For me, it was radio, public speaking, mixing tunes, <laughs> mixing tunes as a DJ, anxiety coming out, sharing with students across Canada as a keynote speaker and as an MC. This is what I'm meant to do. And I know you are also meant for big, exciting things. Hey, after years of dealing with mental illness and having no words to describe it, I finally began my journey of recovery. Back in January 2019, four years ago, I started sharing about the abuse that I experienced, the compulsive addiction I couldn't shake, and the circumstances that led to my many moments of suicidal ideation. The last four years have been the most important years of my life. I began allowing myself to kick shame to the curb, to move from isolation to community, and to find out that I'm not the only one who dealt with these problems. In fact, there's a lot of people out there like me, broken, hurting, isolated, filled with shame and regret. Discovering that I'm not alone allowed me to finally dig into the roots of addiction, mental illness, and the after effects of abuse. And things make sense now in my life, like they've never made sense. I've learned about self-care and the importance of managing my mental health, finding ways to manage anxiety, depression, ADHD, and all the other things floating around my brain. Perfectionism. There's so much that I go, <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't stop. It's nonstop up here. And learning these healthy coping mechanisms has helped me to learn to thrive, excel, and grow despite all the things that have caused me to give up in the past or wanted to give up in the past. <sighs> that doesn't mean everything's easy. I still struggle often with addiction, shame, and isolation. But I understand what it looks like now. And I can reach out to friends in my life who have become like brothers. I've forged relationships that allow me to really know other guys, flaws and all, and they know me as well. Not having to be alone has single-handedly changed my life forever. Because I learned to be brave, reach out, and speak up, the slogan from my friends at Headstrong, I learned how to daily work towards health and wellness. Breaking the stigma that surrounds mental health problems will change the way our country and the world operate. More grace, compassion, and empathy for each other is the key to moving forward. Living with mental health difficulties doesn't make you weak. It doesn't mean you're not good enough. It simply means you're one of millions of Canadians who also deal with these problems. And you may, even around the world, wherever you're watching this from. For some, simply changing our life and finding healthy coping mechanisms can be enough to get past mental health problems. For some, such as myself, a little extra assistance is needed. I have healthy, uh, several healthy coping mechanisms for myself or coping strategies. I take time for mindfulness and meditation. I read my Bible and devotions. I journal my thoughts. I share my story with brothers from around the world that I meet with on a weekly recovery call. And these are just a few of the things I find helpful. Finding balance in our life includes physical, mental, spiritual, and relational health. As you can appreciate, there's a lot of heavy stuff there. But here's the important thing. I thought I would take the majority of those things with me to the grave. I didn't think I'd kill a soul. The freedom I have found in my life came after being brave, reaching out, and speaking up. I couldn't do it alone anymore. It was literally going to cause me to take my own life if something didn't change. So talk to someone today. It's Let's Talk Day, and my encouragement for you is to do something good for your mental health every day. Call a friend, go for a walk, binge out on a good Netflix series, write in your journal, eat healthy, good foods, drink lots of water, and find balance in those many parts of what makes you, you. Your worst days don't define you. The way you deal with your worst days is what defines you. Moving forward, consider, how are you going to deal with hardships? 
I hope you stand up and rise above the stigma and tell someone what you're going through. Maybe you'll start a support group or make a new friend today that could very well be someone that you need and maybe they need you in their lowest moment. I believe this is the generation that will see the stigma of mental health removed and it starts today with you and me. If you're not growing, you're dying. So never stop growing and never stop becoming the person you're meant to be because this world needs you. There's no one else out there like you. So please don't deprive us of your unique gifts, talents, and light. The world needs you. Be blessed and encouraged today that you can do it. And today might be a good day to talk, but so is every other day. This is a conversation that needs to continue. It's definitely not reserved just for Bell at Sock Day or even at a Headstrong Summit with my friends from the Mental Health Commission that I work with. Be brave, reach out, and speak up whenever you need to talk and encourage your friends and family around you that they too can be brave. I want you to take care, know that you matter, you are loved, and there is purpose to your life. Have some great conversations today. Never give up and stay alive. You can find me on all the socials at JD Hunter Music if you want to connect. Also, jdhunter.ca. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now.